Well, welcome, dear friends, to the Heart of the Black Madonna, the YouTube channel that explores all things related to the Black Madonna from an esoteric, artistic, anthropologic, and historical perspective with me, your host, Stephanie Georgiev. I know I keep apologizing for not posting more frequently. What can I say? These last couple of years have been anything but calm and settled. Even during the height of the pandemic lockdowns, there was such upheaval in my personal life in so many ways. But thankfully, I am finally settled with new equipment and have, as my subscribers know, launched a new podcast. It's called The Black Madonna Speaks. I will try to figure out how to post it on this channel, but for now, it would really help me if you would like and subscribe not only to this channel, but to The Black Madonna Speaks podcast, available through Anchor Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Play. Hopefully, I will be on Amazon soon. I'm of the age where all this tech stuff kicks me a little bit of effort to figure out. Eventually I get there, but it does take a while. So here we are in May of 2022. I really love the song from the musical Camelot. It's May. For many of us, in the Northern realms, May is a blessed relief from what seems like an endless winter. Often, March and April are cruel teasers, giving us days with blossoms, warm weather, only to drape us the next day in chilly gloom, even ice, snow, and sleet. But by May, wow, spring has definitely sprung. So how did the month of May become associated with the Virgin Mary? Good question. In Europe, under ancient Druid traditions, there were four main festivals associated with the change of, of the seasons, which reflected the position of the sun and so on. We have the winter and summer solstices, the winter having the longest night and shortest day of the year, and the summer solstice having the longest day and shortest night of the year, and the spring and autumn equinoxes. In between the solstices <clears throat> and equinoxes are other less known festivals that have gotten lost a bit with the diminishment of pagan traditions. Between the winter solstice and spring equinox is Teltane, also known as Candlemas. We moderns mark the date as Groundhog's Day. Between the summer solstice and the autumn equinox is Luganza on the 2nd of August. Between the autumn equinox and the winter solstice, we have Samhain, which is also known as Halloween on October 31st. And between the spring equinox and the summer solstice is Beltane, which some traditions start on April 30th and others say, no, it's May 1st, but basically those two days. But obviously the first of May is now known as May Day. In Druid and Pagan times, Beltane was seen as the end of winter and the onset of spring. It was when the dark god of winter went underground and the flower goddess of spring came up from the underworld and graced the earth with her gifts. In the ancient traditions of Beltane, there was quite a bit of merriment and what we would call baldy celebrations. A tug of war would happen between men and women and whichever side won would get a head start and run into the forests and meadows to be chased by the side that lost. And whoever one caught that night meant a night of, let's say, being fruitful and multiplying. And all of the children conceived from this experience were considered holy. 
the prospect of having a night of such activities, one wonders who canceled that party and replaced it with a maypole associated with the Virgin Mother. It's anyone's guess, but that's what happened. I am not one who supports the notion of syncretisms in terms of Christianity. Yes, there are festivals that were originally of the pagan nature that have been adopted by Christians, but it is more than ancient customs with different names and rituals. It is what I call the evolution of the mysteries. Shalta Cathedral, for instance, is an excellent example of the evolution of the mysteries. In the crypt, the spring, which was the founding touchstone for the cathedral, originally was sacred to the Druids. This spring was in the center of an oak grove, and there had always been a presence of a dark goddess with the well. This dark goddess was transformed into a silver gilt statue of the virgin and child, which obviously throughout the years oxidized and turned black. This statue was brought up to the main sanctuary every May 1st and descended back into the crypt with great pomp and circumstance, I must say, every October 31st. Sounds quite a bit like the ancient festivals of the emergence of the flower goddess, Persephone, for instance, for Beltane, and the dark god of winter associated with Samhain and Halloween. So here we are in the merry month of May, which has quite a history of celebrating the divine feminine, a time of, at least in the Northern hemisphere, of rebirth, of the flowers. One of the quintessential questions of the human condition is what sets us apart from the rest of creation? What does it mean to be human? What are we supposed to do? As art is the creation of organs by which the gods speak to humanity, what is the Madonna in art conveying to us? Mary, the mother of Jesus, is a fascinating character by any stretch of the imagination. From my orientation towards spirit, religion, and Christianity, which is a deeply esoteric one in nature, I recognize Mary not only as a historical character, but also as having deep symbolism for the evolution of humanity. I see her as creating a template for the highest capacity of humanity in our age. In some traditional approaches to Christianity, Mary is seen as the antidote to the actions of Eve, meaning Eve went against the directions she was given in the Garden of Eden, and along with Adam, as representatives of humanity, veered off the original plan. What was the original plan? You may recall in other videos and in my writings, I speak often of the nine hierarchies of angels. You may also recall from other videos and my writings, I speak of the divine Sophia as the first of all creation, the matrix that created the possibility for the logos to manifest a divine mystical partnership that created the possibility for the universe to become a physical reality. The divine Sophia, also known as divine wisdom, allowed for everything we witness and experience around us to, as we hear in Genesis, to be. But as the universe evolves, so does the spiritual world. Humanity was created by divinity to be the catalyst for transforming a cosmos of wisdom into a cosmos of love. 
In order to have love, there must be freedom. There cannot be true love without freedom. To love is a choice. And in order to have freedom, we must have something from which to choose. While I do not necessarily enjoy this aspect of our being, the reality is that the introduction of evil into our existence, this is the prerequisite for freedom. This video is being recorded during terrible violence in Eastern Europe and Africa, and most recently in the United States of America. While there are extenuating circumstances in every situation, it is always a choice to perpetrate evil or to commit love. There's always a choice to choose truth and create beauty. It is always a choice. When humanity veered away from our original plan, a grand, what I call, plan B was set into motion, which involves the preparation for humanity to enter into our original purpose. You may recall from other of my videos and writings how I talk about the hierarchy of angels. This was first articulated for Christians through our favorite divine darkness theologian, Dionysius the Eripagate, in the first century after Jesus incarnated. Dionysius was the first to articulate the spiritual principles for Christians in the first century after Christ's deed in Palestine. There are what many call nine choirs of angels. Sometimes they're also grouped into hierarchies. The first hierarchy is the closest to divinity, the seraphim, cherubim, and thrones. The second hierarchy is in the middle, so to speak, the curiosities, dynamies, and exousiae. The first hierarchy is the one closest to humanity. This is comprised of the archai, archangels, and angels. We humans are to be the 10th hierarchy, the 10th choir in this lovely configuration. We, our position is after the angels. And our purpose is to help transform the cosmos of wisdom into a cosmos of love. This is why we were given freedom. But we were given freedom when we really did not know what or how to do this task. When we used our powerful attribute of freedom to choose to veer away from divinity, the spiritual world realized that we needed a bit of help, a preparation, an education to be able to use our freedom wisely. We read about this in Genesis. The plan was set in motion for the incarnation of the Christ being through a woman. He shall bruise thy head, the serpent was told. The Annunciation is a beautiful motif in Marian art. In the Luke Gospel, Mary's response is quite beautiful and very profound. After being told what was going to happen to her by the Archangel Gabriel, her response is to question how it would be possible and then to say yes to the future. May your word be fulfilled in me, she says in response to Gabriel's explanation. We often do not realize that she actually could have said no. She could have refused, but she did not. And what a healing gesture for the cosmos that followed. All because Mary, a human, chose to say yes to fulfilling divine purpose and will. Brian Gray, in his book, 
Discovering the Zodiac in the Raphael Madonna series, says that the Madonna is a symbol of humanity giving birth to its higher self. We humans must endeavor through our thoughts, feelings, and deeds to develop all aspects of our spiritual and soul bodies so we can meet divinity in full freedom. One aspect of this preparation is to develop our higher self. Humanity was created to be the 10th choir of angels. We are preparing for our task of transforming the cosmos of wisdom into the cosmos of love. The Madonna as art form is a symbolic nature of the highest potential of humanity. Remember the beautiful Christmas carol, Love Came Down at Christmas? We read in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. Mary, the historical being, had cosmic significance in her life's journey and choices. The Madonna as image of the Sophia mysteries and of the manifestation of creation through wisdom into the transformation of wisdom into love is very profound. When we see the image of the Madonna with child, she is a symbol of our participation in this transformation. The Madonna is wisdom and the Christ child is divine love born out of wisdom. Love is born, but it is born in freedom with our assistance. As the Madonna is symbol of the human soul of the highest potential that humanity has, this incredible image is speaking volumes to us about our task. The deep question is what part do you play in this transformation? May your month of May be a time of blessed rebirth for you. May you feel the divine love that permeates every atom of creation. And may you choose to spread this love. <laughs>